The cleaning caregiving connection is not one that we normally talk about. It's not one that we prepare for. Unlike being pregnant for nine months where you know a child is going to come and your whole life is going to change, you don't make preparations for caregiving. It's usually triggered by something and then suddenly you're a caregiver and you're like, oh no, I got to caregive 24-7 and that includes cleaning. I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now, Robert called into the show and asked this question. Hi, Angela. My name is Robert. I love your show. Uh, my uh, husband has fairly recently developed um, a severe illness. It's a type of brain damage that resembles dementia. Uh, he's uh, in his early 40s and it's caused a few house cleaning challenges. Uh, that we need to address. One thing, we have to make the beds very often and uh, we have to use padding uh, just to make sure that uh, there are no accidents. And the bathroom has become a challenge to clean because he's lost his coordination. Uh, do you have any advice? Uh, we have to clean much more often. There's just the two of us and I can't afford a professional house cleaner but a few times a year. Uh, any advice that you have on maintaining a sanitary environment would be most helpful. Thank you and have a great day. Robert, thank you so much for calling into the show. I'm so honored and I am so sad that you find yourself in this situation with your husband. The challenge that you're up against right now is that there are a whole bunch of unknowns. And so there are varying stages of dementia and or Alzheimer's. And my grandmother who had Alzheimer's lived with my mom and dad for the last nine years of her life. And so I was able to see firsthand some of the changes that my grandmother went through and then also some of the changes that the caregivers went through taking care of her 24-7. One of the first things that I would recommend moving forward, because this is kind of an unknown, is that you do connect with some support groups and some grief groups. The husband that you know that was vivacious and energetic and all the things that you were used to as a couple have changed. And so as you go through those changes, there will be a grief process. During the grief process, it's going to be easy to not want to clean. And I love the fact that you're already looking for ways to streamline that process. Um, I'm going to leave links in the show notes to a video that the Alzheimer's Foundation put together, and it is called The Apartment. And it's a series of different things you can do to your living space that will make it easier for the independence of your husband as long as he's independent and then also for you as a caregiver. And there are things like automating everything from the light switches to the music to the television remote controls, the ring doorbell that has a camera on it so that you can monitor his coming and going, things like that that will just make your life a lot easier. There are a couple of things that are not in the video that I do recommend is that you replace, if not already, the flooring in the bathroom and that you turn it into ceramic tile and that you also put up what would be known as like a backsplash around the, the bathroom, probably from the waist height on down of also ceramic tile, because that will make cleaning and sanitizing really, really easy, where if there's any overspray, for example, or there's a lack of body control, that it doesn't absorb into flat paint on the walls. That will make it easier to use an enzyme spray and to spray that down and clean that. A couple things that I recommend is that you clean as you go. And so the daily routines that you have, are probably going to change. And I want for you to be able to give yourself grace. And so the moment might come when you're just exhausted and you say, do I do dishes tonight or do I just go to bed? The answer is you just go to bed because again, you have to take care of yourself first before you can take care of someone else. And so every day you'll be navigating what, what am I able to do in this moment? And so it's gonna be changing and cleaning moment by moment. You might have to change routines that you normally do because the moment doesn't allow it. One of the recommendations that I, I suggest is that you minimize, and that's minimize all the stuff that you have. If you've got five sets of dishes, narrow it down to just one. It will make finding them easier. And I say finding them, it's very common with people who have dementia and or Alzheimer's that they move and misplace things. And just expect this because it's, it's kind of a thing. It's easy to find dishes in the laundry bin and laundry in the dishwasher, things like that. Things will just get moved in strange places. And the less stuff that you have will make it easier to find. And so instead of having a home with lots of things in it, and I don't know if you do or not, but the, the less that you have, it will make it easier to find and easier to maintain and easier to clean. 
It will also remove the confusion of where things go. One of the recommendations for organizing your home in a way that's easy to clean is to put pictures on everything. So there's a picture, for example, on the dresser of there are panties and socks in this drawer so that it makes it easy for you and easy for your partner to remember where those are. So visual cues. On the kitchen cupboard, you wanna put a picture of the dishes. This is where we keep the dishes. And it will just keep him independent as long as possible, which will reduce the stress on you as you go looking for stuff. So one of the things I recommend is that you also have easy to use spray. So it might be a disinfecting spray, for example, underneath the bathroom sink. And then every time you go in the bathroom, you may wanna pull that out tidy up as you go and as you're able to. And you might only have a minute to, to, to clean and tidy and that's it for the bathroom. Use the time that you have while you're able to do it because there are not big you know cleaning sprees that you're gonna have time to do. One of the things that we found with a person with dementia is that it does require 24 seven you know, visual cues so that they don't wander off or so that they don't get into things that would hurt them or be unsafe. And so we wanna just make sure that during the process of this constant monitoring, that you're just able to do what you can, when you can, and then give yourself grace and not be frustrated if you can't do more. All you can do is the best you can do. I hate that you're in this situation. I love the fact that you're willing to give it everything that you have and that you're looking for answers already. This tells me you're an amazing human being and my hat is off to you. So God bless you. Please keep me posted. I'm here rooting for you. And I want this to be as smooth a transition as possible for you. All right, until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Mm -hmm.